Hello, in this Ryujinx video, I am going to show you how to set up Ryujinx on your Windows machine. So I've got separate videos covering it on Linux and Mac. Feel free to check that out. And yes, you can do it on Mac now as well. So that's awesome news for our Mac users out there. So first of all, I want to say this video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. For legal reasons, you should own a console, the game, you know, the keys, etc. All of that stuff. Now that that's out the way. In, this is like a newer version 2023 setup video because the last one that was from about two years ago that I created is slightly outdated now the interface has slightly changed Vulcan support has been added so there's you know I think a need to create a new video but first of all you need to go ahead and download Ryujinx so if you search for Ryujinx go to ryujinx.org I'll provide a link in the description go to download and select the windows version so just click download you'll start downloading i'm going to cancel you also need the prod dock keys you will not work without them and the nintendo switch firmware you want the nintendo switch firmware that's not a rebootless update don't grab that one grab another one obviously for you know legal reasons i can't you know show you because a bunch of videos have been getting taken down by other emulator content creators out there and so I'm not going to show you if you do have any questions about anything about links about downloads feel free to post on the discord group you know we can help you out don't worry so what we're going to do now is go to the downloads folder and I've got so I'll delete Ryu drinks just because I want it to be a bit more fresh and refresh that and for the keys, you would just literally, you know, I'll delete the keys folder as well. And you right click, go to extract all, extract. And say for the firmware, you can leave it because you can install it, extract it, or compressed. It doesn't matter. So I just recommend leaving it. For Ryu drinks, you right click, go to extract all, click extract. I'm not going to do it this way for the simple reason it's slow using the built in Windows extractor. Feel free to do that. But personally, I'm going to use 7-Zip. Feel free to use, download 7-Zip or WinRAR. Just Google those applications, you know, either one of them, and they'll provide you with a much faster extracting experience. Now, open your Ryujinx folder. Go to Publish. Open Ryujinx.exe. And here we go. So it's already opened up. It's already detected again because I had already, you know, got some. I'll go to do, 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 open Ryujinx folder. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this Ryujinx folder. And reopen Ryujinx up now. You don't need to do that. That was just for me. Just so, yes. Yeah, so this, what, this is what will appear. No keys are found. That's okay. And... It asks you, do you want Vulkan as your default graphics back end? Vulkan will give you a better experience, generally speaking, especially if you have newer graphics cards, you will get better performance. So I recommend using Vulkan. You can change it afterwards. So if you need to switch back to OpenGL for whatever reason, you can do that. And now what we want to do is go to File, Open Reusing Folder, go to System, and in here, put your product keys. If a product keys file is already here, sometimes it gets created automatically, delete it because it's you know it's no good. So if we go to our download directory keys, and we only need the product keys, we don't need title keys. Paste it in there. And now if we you know close down Ryu Jinx. and reopen Ryujinx now, we won't get the product keys error anymore. So no product keys error now. Now we can install the firmware. It's very important that you install the firmware after you, you know, copy and paste the product keys, otherwise you'll get error. So go to tools, install firmware, install a firmware from XEI or zip. And now with the window that pops up and go to where you downloaded it, select the zip file, click open. And it literally does not take long at all. Click yes. And there you go. It's done. 
if it pops up saying maybe you've already done a previous setup at one point that a you know an older version is installed you want to override it that's fine just click override that's not a problem so one actual other thing i want to show you is if we go to reujinx.org it's important that you go to the compatibility list and this will allow you to see what games are compatible and if there's any little you know tweaks that you have to do to get it to work what doesn't work for example i'm going to be doing super you just literally if i refresh click on here you leave what's already there you just put super you know web your game in mine super mario odyssey and i should have put odyssey it's so many mario games there we go and recommending graphics backend is vulcan so you play the most first in the intro movie which you know i have experienced that's a higher spec than what i've got so you'd probably run a little better on that one to be fair and it also if you look at the images it recommends docked mode and so that's important as well again i'm going to cover that momentarily so it's very important to have a look at the particular game because it might vary depending on the game, what sort of settings you have to have. You might have to have docked or handheld. So now go to options, settings, and here we don't need to do anything. Go to input, enable docked mode, we're all good here. Now we can configure our controllers. We can configure up to eight controllers. So if you want to do multiplayer action, you're all good to go. Go to player one, and here you just literally select the input device for me, I've only got it like a keyboard connected that is compatible. Otherwise, if you have possibly Joy-Con controllers, a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, a PS4 controller, you know, a PS5 DualSense controller, an Xbox controller, they all work as well. And I'll cover, you know, I'll create separate updated videos for them as well. But literally all you do, you click on one. So if I want this as K, you press K. Boom, there we go. I'm just going to go back to X. There's not much more to it than that. And... There we go. And a little note you can create new profiles by clicking add. So, what's the benefit of creating a profile? You can have different controller configurations for different games, different game genres, for different players. And you can easily remove them as well. And the, the save button is down here. So, I'm zoomed in a fair bit. So, I decided to, you know, you know maximize the other way. You cannot see it. And you just click save once you're done. In system, select your region, so Europe for me, you know, British English. Make sure you have a time zone selected. And the reason for that is some games does require, you know, it's linked with the time in that's built in. So you need to have that selected. Everything else, to be fair, you can leave as is. Make sure you got an audio backend selected as well. Go to graphics. And in here, we can leave that as default. This is where you can change it back to OpenGL if you want to. There may be some games and you'll see like on the compatibility list, they might say it works better in OpenGL. So use OpenGL for that. In case I've only got one GPU, so I don't need to mess around with that. The other thing that you can look at is resolution scale. If you have a higher resolution monitor, you have a more powerful computer, you can include increase the resolution scale, which makes the you know the objects in the game appear sharper and more rounded. So um you can do it, but Obviously, I recommend you try it on native. If it works, then up it slowly until the point, you know, it's no longer smooth. And for post-processing, you can add some anti-aliasing to, you know, smooth out some jagged edges. And apart from that, aspect ratio you leave as is, there's nothing else to it. And the last thing is game directory. So you need to set a game directory. Go to add. This is where all your games are. You can set multiple game directories. Recommend you having a single one for your Nintendo Switch roms and i've got it right here click add click save and there we go so it's picked up the game and there's a few more things before we run the game now and if you if you want to you know refresh maybe you've added some games and you haven't opened and closed closed and open you know reading you can just click the refresh down here if you right click you can go to manage title updates go to add and you can select an update if you have one and click save i do not same principle for DLC. And if you have any, if there's any cheats available, you can go here. Otherwise, you literally just double click and you'll see you'll, you'll go through the process of you know loading the shaders, loading the game. It can take a bit of time, especially if it's the first time you're running the game after setting up the emulator. 
but it's just one of those things you just wait patiently and you'll be all good to go if you want to go full screen you can just enter full screen from here at any point bar or just be playing it in windowed mode okay so the game is now loading fantastic as you can see and down here is where you can you know enable and disable vsync it's enabled by default you can change it to handheld or docked mode change the aspect ratio you can change it you know i mean you can't sorry change the what's it called the graphics renderer it just tells you what it is currently selected to so now i can like use the arrows to go up and down i'm gonna you know select obviously fill and you can you know go back to options settings and check out the latest you know what the current control scheme is so if you forgot it's easy to do especially if you're on keyboard so i'm just going to skip this skip the intro and we'll be getting into the game so because it's an emulator and some games depending on your system you might get crashes that's just you know the way it is especially with the more newer you know emulators for the newer consoles you just reboot the emulator and just continue and you can also go to actions pause and stop emulation so pause if you just need to pause it somewhere right there and do something or you know stop if you just want to completely stop it I'm trying to think what was configured for there we go So as you can see it is working and depending on how powerful your computer is it will depend and what game you're playing you, you'll get different performance so it's just one of those things you just have to see how it goes my cpu is a bit old so intel 3930k the gpu is an rtx 2080 ti gpu wise are more good it's just the cpu is a bit old now for especially you know emulators and that's it and i'm gonna shut this bad boy down now like yes and there you go so as of now there's no safe states in wii u jeans in 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 nintendo switch emulation but hopefully that will come soon because we've got safe states in ps3 emulation via rpcs3 and that was a big deal getting that over the last year so that's it. if you have any questions if you need more help with download links with you know setup with you know how to you know acquire different files for the setup feel free to post questions in the Discord group, link in the description, and there's a dedicated Wii U Jins channel, feel free to post there, we will help out. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to get notified of new emulator content, and as always, I'll see you in the next emulator video. Bye bye.